Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short, so glad to have you along with us today as we get in the Word of God. Talk about it, kind of a heavy message today because we're talking about the consequences of bad decisions. We're called upon to make decisions, brothers and sisters, and you and I need to make decisions that are consequential. In the Sermon on the Mount, where we've been the last few weeks, Jesus makes this statement. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Yesterday we talked about how in this life, on this earth, there are rewards and consequences for those who make rewards for those who make the right decisions, consequences for make those who make the wrong decisions, but they usually don't show up immediately. Indeed, often entering that narrow gate and walking that narrow path involves some initial hardship or suffering for long-term benefit. And entering by the, the wide gate, the broad gate, and the broad path is easy. That's why a lot of people travel by it. But in the end, it leads to destruction. So yesterday, if you missed yesterday's message, check it out. We talked about how there's consequences on this earth. But today, we want to talk about consequences in eternity. Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Do not marvel at this, he says, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come forth. Those who do the good deeds to a resurrection of life. Those who committed the evil deeds to a resurrection of life judgment. That's right. We don't hear about this often, do we? I don't know. I, I personally, I tell you, I don't like thinking about hell or even talking about it, about eternal judgment. It's a heavy topic. It's a distressing topic. It's troubling for us. And many people want to, many people reject uh, the Bible, reject Jesus, reject the Christian faith, because somehow they don't like the idea of hell. Well, I got a better idea. Uh, just escape it. The Bible says it's appointed unto all men to die once and then comes judgment. Not believing in it doesn't cause it to not happen. I remember you know, I, I, there are students on campus who actually tell me they don't need to worry about hell because they don't believe in it. Well, to me, that's like saying you don't need to worry about your finals because you don't believe they're, they're going to have happen someday. We all have a final. We all have an eternal final, a final judgment. And in that judgment, some will pass and some will fail. And there is no makeup exam. The judgment is eternal. The judgment lasts forever. And we're told that there will be a time when Jesus will come back and Jesus will cry forth and the dead will rise unto a judgment. Those who did the good, it says, the, those who had faith, who did the will of God, had faith in Jesus Christ, will go to a resurrection of life. But those who did not, to a resurrection of judgment. What's that judgment going to be like? Let's look at what the scripture says. The big term the Bible actually uses, it talks about fire, a place of fire. Now people say, is this going to be literal or is it figurative? And to me, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to be a really, really bad place. I just say you don't want to go there. Whether it's literal or not, it's going to be painful. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a place you don't want to go. The Bible gives us several examples or several specific places where it talks about this fire of hell, shall we say. One is Lazarus, the first and probably the biggest one, Lazarus and the rich man. In Luke, 9, Luke 16, beginning with verse 19, Jesus tells a story about a rich man who had everything in this life, and Lazarus, the poor man, had nothing. They both died, and Lazarus went to the place of torment, and he was in a fire. And, and excuse me, the rich man went there, and Lazarus went to the, the, the place of paradise, Abraham's bosom. And the, the rich man begged Abraham, please 
said Lazarus, give me just one drop of water to put on my tongue, for I'm in torment in this flame, he says. And Abraham's answer, no, there's a great chasm between you and us, so that you can't come up here and we can't go down there. There's this great chasm, a great division. You can't, you're one place or the other. You don't travel between the two. And my friend, that man, 2,000 years later, is still wishing for that drop of water, for he's still in agony in that flame. Who would want to go there? Who would want to go to a place like that? Who would choose that? The second example I think of is in the, terrible, the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew 13. And he also tells, actually he repeats this in a couple of the parables there in Matthew 13, but I'll mention the wheat and the tares. The wheat and the tares grew together. They looked similar until they were full grown. The wheat looked like a tare. The tare looked like a wheat. Wheat, the tare is a weed. The wheat is something you can eat. And at the end of time, God was going to divide them. And the, the, wheat, the weeds, the tares would be thrown into what it says, unquenchable fire, where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth who would want that who would want a future that that's going to just be weeping gnashing of teeth anger regret uh, anger at the situation that you find yourself in in which there's now no escape who would want that don't choose that path jesus tells a parable of the sheep and the goats in which they would, the goats would be separated from the sheep. The sheep would go to eternal life. The goats would go to eternal judgment, again, in fire, where there would be uh, regret, there would be gnashing of teeth, there would be what do they call outer darkness. Who would want this? Why would anyone choose that path? In Mark chapter 9, verses 42 through 48, Jesus talks about a place called Gehenna, Gehenna is actually outside of Jerusalem. It's like the garbage dump, and it burned with fire always. And it said the worm doesn't die and the fire's not quenched. It was the garbage dump, always on fire. With uh, Who would want to go there? Who would want to live there? Who would want their future to be there? No one. And then finally, in Revelation 20, it says that death and Hades would be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire. Who would want to be cast into a lake of fire? You, no one, hopefully. But you see, this is the destiny of those who enter in by the broad gate. That's the destiny of those who just follow the crowd. That's the destiny of those who don't enter by the narrow gate. That's the destiny who say, I want it now, I'll pay later. That's the price they'll pay. My friends, don't, don't, don't do it. But on the other hand, what's this resurrection of life look like? Well, there's many things we could talk about heaven, but simply put, I think it's a place of no mores. Revelation 21, 4 says, it says, there would be no more tears, no more tears in heaven, no more death in heaven, no more mourning we would be comforted. No more, no more crying and no more pain. So it's described that way as a place of no mores. It's also described as a place of entering into the very glory of God. It will be an enjoyable place. It will be a place of peace, of contentment. There will be no sin in hell, in heaven. There will be no sin. They, there will be righteousness, goodness, kindness, love, why would anyone reject that? Why would anyone? Well, they may not believe in eternal judgment, and yet down deep, people do. They know it's coming. My friend, if you have never yet come to that place where you know you have eternal life, come today. Put it off no longer. Look at what Jesus said. Do not let your heart be troubled, he says in John 14. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Here we go. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. Brothers, sisters, Jesus is preparing a place for you. 
you might say, well, I suppose there's a place in heaven for Tom. I suppose there's a place in heaven for that guy or this girl. Yeah, there's a place in heaven for you too. Jesus said in John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. Our God wants to give life. Our God wants to give forgiveness. Our God is a merciful God. He takes no delight in sending a person to eternal judgment. This is not, Jesus came not to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Jesus had insight into heaven and hell. He spoke about judgment more than anyone in the New Testament. He spoke about hell more than anyone in the Bible. We'd best take his warnings to, to heart. We'd best take his warnings to heart. There is a, a, a narrow path that leads to true eternal life, abundant life here, eternal life there. It may be a time of difficulty at first. He said, strive to enter by that narrow gate over in the book of Luke, because sometimes it's challenging. There's a cost to be paid, but it leads to life. But that broad path, the many travel, the easy gate, the wide gate, you don't want to go there. You don't want where it leads to. It leads to destruction. Oh, my goodness. This is serious, folks. These things are real. This really matters. These are not make-believe places. This is not just a scare tactic to get you to behave. No, hell and judgment is the consequence of having lived a life in apathy towards, rejection of, rebellion against Almighty God. Heaven is the place that God offers those who realize they were wrong and seek His mercy and His forgiveness through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you ever received Christ, if not, do it right now. If you've never got right with God, let's do it right now. Let me lead you in prayer as we do this. Oh, Father, we acknowledge to you our own. We were part of the rebellion. We've been part of the rebellion. We've been in rejection of Christ. We've gone our own way. We've sinned against you. We have thought we were good enough to be received by you. We acknowledge, Lord, we've sinned against you and fallen short of your requirements. And we deserve your judgment. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that you came to bear the judgment for us. When you died on the cross, you died as a sacrifice for our sins. You gave your life for us. We're grateful. We believe that your death satisfies the, the, the requirement of, our, of God for the sins we've committed. And we believe you rose from the dead and have been declared the Son of God with power. We receive you, Jesus Christ. We receive your forgiveness. We receive your love. We receive your salvation. It's your gift. We don't reject it. We receive it. And we trust that you and what you've done for us will deliver us from this eternal judgment. Thank you, Jesus, that you're preparing a place for us. Thank you for each one of us. There is a place for us in that Father's house. We bless you, thank you, and love you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Well, folks, this is a little bit heavier message than normal, but it's every day we come here, we get in the Word of God, and we talk about what's true. This is important. In a world of deception and lies and fake, fake everything, fake news, fake science, fake religion, fake people, we want to talk about what's true because Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth sets us free. We find that truth in the Word of God. That's why we come here every day to get in the Bible, talk about it, learn from it, grow in it. I hope you'll join us. If you're new today, I hope you make a commitment to come here every day. You come here every day for the next several months. Watch how your life will change. I guarantee it will because there's power in the Word of God. To those of you who do come here every day, I love you. So glad you're with us. My God bless you, strengthen you, and fill you with his joy. Until we meet tomorrow, be filled with that joy and his love. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.